Welcome back. We are working on parts of speech here, and I'm going to give you practice. So the things that you'll see are very new. So I want you to identify which part of speech we are talking about. In English, we identify these 10 parts of speech. Nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, pronouns, articles, conjunctions, auxiliaries, and interjections. We have covered most of these. Actually, the first eight we have already covered and talked about. But we really need to, br I need to bring it back to your attention over and over so that you get the fluency that you need when you write and when you speak. So nouns, as we know, is name of people and things. Verbs are what? Could be actions or could be a state of being. Adjectives are what? Words that they tell you something about the noun. Like what kind? It answers the question of what kind. Like you said, this is an expensive uh, computer. So what kind of computer? Expensive computer. So expensive tells you something about the computer. That's an adjective. Prepositions show a relationship between two nouns. Like you said, the computer is on the table. So computer, table, and on shows some relationship between the two nouns. Adverbs, they modify the verb. See, it says adverb. So they basically talk about the verb. Verb is what? The action. So it tells you how an action takes place, where an action takes place, and when an action takes place. Like if you say that I study English every day. Every day is, means when. So that's an adverb. If you say I study English at home, means what? Uh, 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 that means it's a place. So place is the adverb. Or if you say I study English carefully or enthusiastically, that tells you how you study it enthusiastically with a lot of excitement. That is also one adverb. So those adverbs that tells you how, they end with L-Y, like obviously, clearly, enthusiastically, carefully. Every time you see L-Y, most likely it's an adverb. And an answer how, like you drive carefully. F carefully is the adverb. Anyhow, pronouns are uh, words that they take the place of a noun. Like you say, my brother uh, is uh, an engineer. He works for Caltrans, for example. He, it means my brother. It takes the place of brother, the noun. And then articles are those words like a uh, and da uh, and and. There are only three articles in English. And uh, they come before a noun. Uh, and conjunctions are words that they connect when we studied them before. Uh, um, and um, <clears throat> auxiliaries are the ones that what? That they show you uh, uh, that they come before the verb and they express different kind of uh, mood of the sentence that, that we talked about modal auxiliaries. Uh, and interjections are words that what? That they show strong feelings uh, uh, in a sentence. So here I have some sentences. And in, e in each sentence, I have highlighted a word in red I've also underlined it to really get your 100% of your attention. And what I want you to do here is tell me what part of speech is it. The sentences are short and simple. All what I want is this. Tell me what part of speech is it. A noun, a verb, an adjective, an adverb, a pronoun, a preposition, an auxiliary, an interjection. What? There are 10 parts of speech. Which one is it? Sentence number one. Because George didn't study, he failed the test. Which part of the speech is because? What's the correct answer? Because George didn't study, he failed the test. The correct answer is what? Because is a conjunction. It connects these two sentences. He failed the test. George didn't study. The two sentences, you connect them. You can also move it around. You could say what? George failed the test because he didn't study. So because is what? A conjunction, uh, 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 a word that connects two sentences. Betty, the name of a girl, writes carefully and neatly. Carefully and neatly. So if you remember, I said it ends with what? L-Y. L-Y answers what? That how does she write? Carefully. How does she write? Neatly. So carefully is what? Adverb. 
neatly also is adverb, but it means what? Very cleanly. When she writes, the paper that she writes on looks very neat and clean. And there are not a lot of spots on it. She doesn't write and cross things out. It looks very nice and professional. Sentence number three. Mr. Gomez has lived in the United States for 15 years. However, he cannot read and write English. Which part of speech is however? Remember, however means what? But. What, so the meaning is but, but what part of speech is it? Let me read the sentence again. Mr. Gomez, the name of a person. It's a Spanish, uh, in the Spanish language, they use this word a lot. Mr. Gomez has lived in the United States for 15 years. However, he cannot read and write English. So which part of the speech is however? The correct answer is conjunction. It's a kind of conjunction. So it connects, basically, it shows relationship between two sentences. Uh, we have studied this before. There are four kinds of conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions, subordinating conjunctions, correlative conjunctions, and conjunctive adverb. We studied them like a year ago. So I'm bringing them back to your attention. So however is what? A conjunctive adverb. It's also called transition word. Shows relationship between two sentences. It shows a contrast. If, you, if a person lives in a, another country for 15 years, what do you expect from that person? To be able to read that language and write the language. But Mr. Gomez cannot do that. So you say however show a contrast. That's a conjunction. Sentence number four. Teachers must prepare the students for challenges of tomorrow. Teachers must prepare their students for the challenges of tomorrow. Must. What part of the speech is must? Look at its location. Prepare is what? The verb. It comes before the verb prepare. And it gives us a specific meaning. So this is one of those words that we studied the last few weeks, and that is what? Auxiliary. What kind of an auxiliary? Modal auxiliary, meaning that it changes the mood of the sentence. It gives it a special meaning. So it's an auxiliary. Sentence number five. Do you need help with your homework? Do you need help with your homework? What is, what part of speech is help? Is this a noun, a verb, an adjective, pronoun, prepositions, adjective, auxiliary, interjection, which one? The correct answer, help can be a verb, it could be a noun. But in this sentence, it says, look at this, do you need what? Help. You could, you could, you could, you could, you could substitute help with another word. You could say what? Do you need a book? Do you need money? Do you need time? So you could put a noun in its place. So it is what? A noun. If you say, I will help you, in that sense, help is what? A verb. But in this sentence, need is the verb. Do you need help? Help becomes what? The noun in the sentence. So sometimes a part of speech is not set. It depends on how you use it in a sentence. In this specific sentence, need is used as a noun. Uh, uh, the verb is what? Uh, uh, sorry, help is used as a noun, need is the verb. Do you need help? Help, noun. Sentence number six. Dr. Johnson met his clients in a coffee shop. Dr. Johnson met his clients in a coffee shop. What part of the speech is his? The correct answer is what? Remember, there are 10 parts of speech. Which one is this? Noun, verb, adjective, preposition, pronoun, auxiliary, uh, interjection, uh, conjunction, what? The correct answer is pronoun. So instead of say Johnson's, you say his clients. Sentence number seven. In 2014, there will be an election in Afghanistan. Election. Which part of a speech is election? There will be an election in Afghanistan. Remember, we said that a noun is a word that tells you about the name of a place, the name of a person. It's also the name of an event. So election is an event. Something happens. People do things. And that is what? That is election. So 
uh, uh, election is a noun. It's the name of an event. Sentence number eight. The doctor who gave you this prescription is very kind. Which part of the speech is who? The doctor who gave you this prescription is very kind. Who is what? A noun, a verb, an adjective, an adverb, a pronoun, a preposition, an auxiliary, interjection, conjunction, article. Which one? The correct answer is what? Who takes the place of a noun doctor? It, it is what? A pronoun. It's actually called a relative pronoun. And you know prescription. Prescription is a piece of paper on which the doctor writes the name of the medicine for the patient. Sentence number nine. She has not finished her homework yet. What part of the speech is has? She has not finished his homework, her homework yet. Has is what? What part of speech? Again, a noun, a verb, an adjective, an adverb, a pronoun, a preposition, an auxiliary, article, interjection, or conjunction. Which one? The correct answer is what? Auxiliary. Remember, we talked about two kinds of auxiliaries. Helping verbs and also what? Modal auxiliaries. In this case, it helps you to make what? Has is, is helping you to make the present perfect tense. So it depends on how you use has. If you say, my brother has a job in the city of San Francisco, then you say what? He has a job. Has becomes a verb. But in this case, she has finished. Has is not a verb. The verb is finished. Has helps you to create what? Or to make the present perfect tense. So has is a helping auxiliary verb. Sentence number 10, the last one. Ouch, I hurt my finger. Ouch. Ouch, what part of speech is that? Look at this uh, uh, punctuation mark. This punctuation mark is called what? It's called an exclamation. It means you show a strong feeling. You say, wow. It shows, that it shows excitement. In this case, you show what? A strong feeling that something hurts you. You make noise, you say, ouch. So in Farsi, you say, wah, for example. So what is this wah? Which part of speech is that? What is ouch, the equivalent of that in, in, in English? The correct answer is interjection. An interjection is a word that expresses strong feelings. That is what? The part of speech. Now. Um, we will take a short commercial break here. After the break, we're going to continue with grammar lessons, and we're going to continue with auxiliaries. So please stay with us. Thank you.